I wish more people knew the correct way to deliver an effective apology. Since the discovery of the remains of the Aboriginal children in 2021 in former Canadian residential schools, the world has been concerned about this historical event. In fact, I knew about this part of history a couple years earlier. To celebrate the 150th anniversary of Canada's foundation, the biggest art museum in Montreal did an exhibition regarding this event. I just immigrated to Canada from China at the time, and I was at the metro station when I saw a poster containing this painting. In the painting, there was this naked person sitting in front of a former occasion resembling an old-fashioned political slash business meeting. I was very confused. Was the person male or female? It seemed to have the body of a man, the high-heeled shoes of a woman, and the face that could be both. As a result, my mother took my brother and I to the exhibition on that Sunday. The exhibition was called Shame and Prejudice by the artist Kent Monkman at the Montreal's McCord Art Museum. As someone that is half white, half First Nation, and a non-binary artist, Kent Monkman is known to portray the crimes committed by the colonial policy in his artworks, such as the expropriation of lands owned by the Aboriginals, the plundering of child custody from the Aboriginal parents, and forceful action of taking the indigenous kids to residential schools where some of them would die, and the absolute extermination of the Aboriginal languages, their tribal ceremonies, their tribal rituals, and other traditions and cultures. The topic of most of his paintings was how the Aboriginals survived after the decline of the beaver trade. The extinction process of American bisons and the loss in ownership of their land. His most famous painting was called The Scream and it was made in 2016. It depicted the exact process of how the Catholic priests took away forcibly the children from their parents' arms and forcefully sent to residential schools under the supervision of the Canadian Royal Mounted Police. It is also part of Canadian history, and we should still recognize the painful parts in history instead of forgetting them. The Canadian government's respect for this artist shows great bravery and it has made many more people focus on this event. As a result, my mother bought me and my brother a picture book of Kent Monkman featuring his artworks. Before the bones of the children victims were discovered, the Canadian government already admitted to this disgraceful mistake that they made in history and apologized globally, and why are they still not forgiven? I think Canada has no intention on hiding the historical facts and wants this apology to be received by more people. But the Canadians are constantly seen by the world as the most frequent apologists, and their form of apology was meant only for consolation and does not intend to bear any legal responsibilities. So sometimes people are not reconciling to this type of apology. I understand that reconciliation is not easy, but I think there are two points that are crucial to a successful apology. Number one is that the Canadian government has already done, is that an apology has to be delivered as early as possible and the and before that all the evidence against you is shown. The second, which Canada has not done enough of, is that an effective apology always comes with an atonement, which means that you have to do actions to pay for the wrongs that you've done. I don't think Canada has done enough on the second point. I sincerely hope that Canada
Canada heals the traumatic memories of the Aboriginal people and truly become an icon in the world as the professional apologist uh, and acceptance and reconciliation. Thank you for listening.